Praise the Lord. Would you turn your Bibles tonight to the book of Hebrews chapter 5. Sunday evenings, I've been putting an emphasis on pursuing God. I haven't labeled it as such. But just making a personal attempt to let God work His transforming power in our lives. Amen. I'm going to avoid the temptation to look at this wonderful context of Hebrews. And I don't do this often, but I want to lift, as it were, one verse to focus on tonight that shares a little photograph. I say little in size of the verse, photograph of our Lord when He was here on earth. Would you stand for the reading of God's Word, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 7. Speaking of Jesus, who in the days of His flesh, when He had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying, He offered up with strong crying and tears unto Him that was able to save Him from death. And he was heard in that he feared. Strong cried in tears. And he was heard. Hallelujah. He offered up prayers and supplication with strong cried and tears. I want to preach tonight on prayer changes. I'm going to let you fill in the blank tonight as we preach. Prayer changes. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for what you're trying to do in this service. Lord, you are here to save. You're here to help. You're here to give hope. Lord, may your Holy Spirit do His work tonight in our hearts. Lord, may in this altar service there be real victories, real transformation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Just recently we've come from Camp Dove, and I don't know if you've been in them but uh, I appreciate the prayer chapels there. I just like even the architecture. They're not large, but they got the high uh, ceiling roof that goes way up. And if you've been in there up at the front at the altar, they have one of those pieces of wood ingrained with a router. And it says, prayer changes things. Now that's encouraging to know. Prayer changes things. But I was praying there, either this past Camp Dove or one of the recent ones, and it occurred to me that there is something that needs changed by prayer more than things, and that's me. And even more wonderful than prayer changes things is the truth that prayer changes me. Hallelujah. Prayer changes me. Prayer is the deepest work the human spirit can do. And prayer will do on the human spirit the deepest work that can be done. Nothing will change your and I's spirit, your and I, uh, my heart, like prayer. It'll change us. How many believes that tonight? And I, I want to ask you, not in any condemnatory way, I just want to ask you in, in, in a rhetorical way, but to drive this home tonight, When was the last time you just really all out prayed? I mean, put everything you had into your praying. When was the last time you prayed a prayer that went far beyond habit, that went far beyond ritual, that went far beyond recital? You prayed a prayer that went far beyond just a little exercise that we've learned to do. When's the last time you have prayed a prayer where you just bared your heart to God? I mean, you you just you just totally cried out from the innermost part of your being. When's the last time you prayed and just really expressed the state of your soul? You just said, God, this is the way it is with me. 
this is the way I feel this is the way I've been thinking this is what my attitude has been this has been my motives when's the last time you prayed and in the voice of scripture you poured out your heart to God Amen. we see that kind of pray, prayer being prayed by Jesus but I believe it's that kind of prayer that will change me and it will change you hallelujah that kind of praying in this verse I've given you tonight amen I want to look I want us to look at the all out way Jesus prayed I mean when Jesus prayed he prayed I want us to look at that and then I want us to consider what happened when Jesus prayed and to take all of that and begin to consider what will happen when we pray like he prayed I'm talking about that all out pouring out your soul before God amen I believe we need that kind of prayer I tell you it'll touch a person's heart to hear somebody else praying like that but I'm telling you it touches God's heart if there's desperate needs in this house tonight the best thing you could do is just come to God and begin to pray an all out prayer to God I mean just pour that thing out I mean get down to business and intercede and supplicate and entreat amen and just make it known to God the way it is and you'll find when it's all said and done yes prayer changes things but you'll discover even something more necessary you'll discover that prayer changes me prayer changes me I want us to first of all tonight to look at the example of his prayer the Bible speaks here in the verse who in the days of his flesh that means when Jesus walked this earth look at the example in his prayer Jesus is the great example in all things and if the master if the son of God the son of man he who was man God if the creator of the universe if the redeemer if the master teacher if the counselor the prince of peace if he prayed oh what an example that you and I should and can pray as well can you say man he is the great example Jesus prayed regularly consistently and persistently the Bible says in a great while before day Jesus rose up and he went out into the darkness to a solitary place in the mountain slope somewhere at a rock somewhere at a tree stump but he rose and he went to pray I'm telling you if the master prayed it's a great example that we need to pray to hallelujah and when Jesus prayed it was no religious routine or religious ritual when Jesus prayed it was talking to God pouring himself out to God I want you to notice the words in particular in the days of his flesh I know it's talking about that he prayed not when he was in heaven at the right hand of God but he prayed when he became a man incarnated in the flesh he prayed when he became a man and he walked this earth but I'm telling you I believe as a man in the flesh he prayed because when you live in the flesh you need to pray amen I mean I'm told being in the flesh brother May he faced the same things we face he had the same pressures he dealt with people People problems. He dealt with things problems. I mean, he lived the life in the flesh. And living this life in the flesh, he prayed. I'm telling you, we live in the flesh. We live this life. If Jesus prayed while he was in the flesh, we know that we're in the flesh. And if we're going to make it, it'll be because in the flesh we have prayed. Amen. That's the only way we can deal with the problems of our life, relationship problems problems and financial problems and physical problems all those things that arise from life in the flesh he meant the only way we'll make it through it and be victorious is to pray but he's already given us the example because when he was in the flesh he prayed he prayed oh what an example amen Jesus had supernatural powers you know that Jesus could do anything Jesus could work miracles whenever he wished then why did he pray ever think about that if he could work a miracle whenever he wanted why did he pray 
because he was in the flesh and a flesh I'm not talking about the carnal nature now but the natural person a human being needs prayer he had the power to work a miracle but he prayed why because he knew that being in the flesh prayer changes mankind and prayer would change him he could work a miracle whenever he needed but prayer helped him as a man as a man he dealt with things he dealt with the temptation of attitudes he had no carnal nature such as we and I I, no doubt there's some things that he never and I know he didn't succumb to but he knew that prayer refreshed him as a man and prayer renewed him as a man and prayer as a man reinforced to him the truths of God and prayer made the father come near and prayer made the spirit more real and prayer made his mission more clear hallelujah he did all that as a man he didn't pray because he needed to pray to work a miracle he could do that but he prayed because he knew what prayer did for him as a one who lived in the flesh I'm telling you yes maybe we need to pray for miracles yes sir but we need to pray because prayer does something for we who live I'm telling you it will change an attitude change a motive change a perspective change everything about us hallelujah when we pray He's given us the example to pray. In all probability, look here in this verse. It said, when he had offered up prayers and supplication. Notice the language here. He offered up prayers. And, and, and most scholars believe, and I do as well, that when it talks about offering up, it's a direct reference. It's a direct reference to his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. But I I want you to look at the word offer. What does that imply? That implies when he prayed, he wasn't there to get. He was there to give. Think about it. Look at the language there. He offered up prayers. In other words, when he prayed, he wasn't going to prayer to get. He was going to prayer to give. To give of himself. To give of his life. He meant to the will of the Father. And this being a reference to, to the Garden of Gethsemane. In all probability it was. When he got to that garden, what did he pray? He prayed, not my will, but thine be done oh hallelujah what an example prayer is to change us prayer is the means that God uses to change us I believe that tonight prayer is the means that God uses to change me could I conclude from that if I'm not praying it's an indication I don't want to change if prayer is the means that God uses to change me when I quit praying it's an indication I don't want to change I'll tell you that's the truth when a person doesn't want to change their opinion of something when a person doesn't want to change the course of action they've chosen when a person doesn't want to change an attitude they have they'll quit praying every time Boy, I done gone to Madeline. <laughs> How many believe that? Prayer is the avenue God uses to change me. I don't know how you feel. I feel like I need to begin to pray because I need God to change me. Amen. We've looked at the example of his prayer in this short verse, but notice the expression of his prayer. The verse says, the expression of his prayer, the verse said, when he had offered unto God prayers and supplication with strong cry, and tears strong crying and tears one man said I don't know who said it but when he, he said when it's the hardest to pray pray the hardest when it's the hardest to pray pray the hardest Jesus was really praying Jesus was praying with strong crying and tears strong crying the crying here doesn't mean the tears the crying here means with his voice strong it literally means forceful outcries I know we have some friends in the evangelical world that tell us we ought to pray quietly and there's a time for that we don't pray loud to get attention and we don't pray loud to be distracting but we pray loud as Jesus did because we are desperate to get what we need to receive from God hallelujah it's strong crying a forceful outcry and with tears I mean he wept when he prayed 
And again, this is no doubt a reference to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus walked up the slopes of the Mount of Olives. He said to the bulk of his disciples, You stay here while I go yonder to pray. And he took Peter and James and John with him. And the Bible said when he got apart from the rest of the disciples that Jesus began to be sorrowful and very heavy and he fell on his face and he prayed until he sweat as it were great drops of blood. Amen. And now the scripture tells us what he was doing when he was on his face before God. He was putting out strong cries. I mean he was praying with a loud voice. Not because he was trying to get any attention. He was praying loudly because he was in desperation. And this verse tells us as he lay on the face, his face in the garden, he was weeping tears. Oh, I'm telling you, that's really praying. Amen. And it did something for Jesus. And it'll do something for us as well when we get to the place we're willing to cry out to God and to weep before Him. That kind of prayer is going to change things. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brian, how would you how would you sign crying out real loud and weeping? How would you do that? And weeping. Amen. Turn around, let him see that. This is what Jesus was doing. I mean, even that is an emphatic, passionate thing. Crying out and weeping. Crying out and weeping. I'm telling you, look at the expression of his prayer. I remember years ago in Bible school, some of my so-called friends, we'd been in, in the altars praying, and they got me alone later, and they said, you know what we notice about you? We, what we notice about you is your voice changes when you pray. They were making fun of it. They said, you know what you need to do? You need to talk to God just like you talk to one of us, your friends. Just like you talk to another friend. Your voice changes when you pray. That got to bothering me. You know, there's always some spiritual person around take the spirituality right out of you. You need to pray to God just like you would talk to your friend. I mean, that's so spiritual. But it sapped the spirituality right out of me. I about lost it over I mean, it got to bother me. People's commenting on how I prayed. Of course, I liked that years ago, you know, when that young preacher, he, or he wasn't a preacher, he was just a layman of the church. He got up and prayed in church. And I mean, he, he just butchered the English language, and he said some things that never, people never heard in prayer before. And so they sent out the deacon board, talked to him, talked to him about how he should clean up the way he prayed. I mean, he wouldn't say anything bad. It just was, you know, it, it just wasn't what they were used to. And they went over to his house to visit him, knocked on the door, got seated around. They said, brother, you know, when you pray, you get your grammar wrong. And, you know, you say some things we're not used to hearing. And they just went on and on. You ought not to pray that way. Just gone on. And, and, and when they got all through, they said, and now, brother, do you have anything to say? He said, I sure do. He said, when I pray, I ain't talking to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I pray, and that got to bother me. You, your voice changes. You shouldn't talk. You should just talk to God like He's another one of your friends. Well, you know what I, I, I determined? Yes, He's my friend, but He's not just another friend. He's God. I didn't think that then, but I do now. You know, I talk to my spouse like I don't talk to anybody else. I got one spouse, and I talk to her. I'm not talking about bad. I'm talking about good. I don't talk. I'm already getting in trouble with that illustration. We'll just. I don't talk to any of you the way I talk to my wife. Because she's different. She's my friend, but she's different. She's my spouse. And I talk to God like I don't talk to any of you. Because he's my friend, but he's my God. Amen. There's no one else like him. None beside him. None except him. Oh, Hallelujah. I mean, people may get disturbed about that. They said, oh, just talk to Jesus like your friend. I'm telling you, when Jesus talked to the Father, he wasn't just talking like Father. I mean, he was crying out and weeping. I thought beyond that, you know, talk to God like a friend. You know, I, I'm glad with the comfort of that. I, know, I believe you can talk to God like he's your friend because he is. But there's something about it. If I was out hunting with one of my good friends, Brother Steve, we're out hunting and we're not far away. Go ahead and stand up. Hey man, in the woods, and, and I've, I've almost did this. I've been warned about it. You're out in the woods. There's some old wells covered up with rotten wood and leaves. You don't see them. You can step on one of those things and fall down the well. It's happened. But you're my 
my friend, right? I mean, we can have friendly conversations. But if I was out hunting with him in a little bit apart, and I fell through one of the, uh, those uh, coverings and down into that well, I'm not going to say, well, he's my friend, so I'm going to talk to him just like I would my friend. Hey, Brother Steve, could you come over here and help me? I'm just going to talk to him like my friend, you know. Brother Steve, hey, Brother Steve, Brother Steve, would you mind to come over He's my friend. I'm just going to. No, he may be my friend. But if I'm in trouble, I'm going to be yelling, Brother Steve, help! That, <clears throat> that was my Sunday morning <laughs> voice. Come, amen. Yeah, he's my friend. But when I get in trouble, I, 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 my, my voice is going to change. Now, now, those that told me that, they'll never hear this sermon. But it does mean a lot of good to know that. Yes, he's my friend. But my voice may change and I may cry out because he's my God. And he's the only one that can give the help I, I need. Amen. And when I, a strong crying and tears. But, you know, beyond even this, even this whole chapter, and I, I told you I wouldn't get into it. But it's showing how Christ is, high, is our high priest. And the wonderful thing is, this shows that our God can be moved moved. Jesus can be moved. And he didn't just have strong crying and tears for himself in the garden. He had strong crying and tears for his people. Hallelujah. In fact, he said of his disciples, he said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but I pray for them, for they are thine, and you've given them to me, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and so I'm going to pray for them. But Sister Brock, he didn't just say he'd pray for those twelve. He said, I'll neither will I pray for them also but also for all them that shall believe on me through their word. That strong crying and tears that our Lord did. He does it for us. He did it for us. Hallelujah. He's a compassionate high priest. Jesus wept at Lazarus' grave. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Oh, what a high priest. Amen. That was the expression of his prayer. Amen. Strong crying and tears. But there's one other thing about his prayer. He said it was he was heard in that he feared. That doesn't mean he was afraid of the Father. It just means as the Son, when he prayed, he had the utmost reverence and respect for his Father. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I'll climb on no soapbox. But some of that silly stuff you find under the name of religion today teaches people to come before God frivolous and, and all this goofing off stuff. I'm telling you, He is God. And we need to approach Him with reverence. Thankful that we can come. We can come boldly, but we don't come frivolously. Amen. We can come boldly, but we don't come lightly. We come with reverence. If the Son had reverence when He approached the Father, Amen. We need to have reverence when we we approach him. Much to be said, but we'll move on except to say Jesus wasn't angry. He wasn't upset when he prayed at God. He was reverent. Reverent. You know, some folks, they call it prayer, but their whole prayer is blaming God and complaining against God. Like God, it's God's fault. I mean, if you want the prayer that gets God to move, amen, don't come complaining and blaming. Come with reverence. Hallelujah. And the, what, what was the expectation of his prayer? It's found in one phrase, the expectation of his prayer. It said, and he was heard. I want to tell you, when Jesus prayed, he expected that he was going to be heard. Did you know we can have the same expectation? Hallelujah. I said we can have the same expectation. I know that Jesus had it. The Bible says there at Lazarus' tomb, Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I am thankful that you hear me. I know that you hear me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe on me. But did you see how he began his prayer? He said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you hear me always. I'm I'm telling the expectation of Jesus' prayer is that he was going to be heard and we can have the same expectation. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. The psalmist said, Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears him. His ear is open to our cry. I don't care if you're an unbeliever. If you'll come crying out, 
to be saved. His ear will open up. You can expect to be heard. But if you're God's people tonight, whatever the need, whatever the difficulty, whatever's going on in your mind, your heart, your family, your life, your marriage, if you call out to God, you can expect to be heard. Hallelujah. Last of all, what was the experience of his prayer? What was the experience of his prayer? We've already said this was the prayer, no doubt, in the Garden of Gethsemane. But look at this verse one more time here. It said, He offered up prayers with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death. What was he praying? He said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. What cup? The cup of death on the cross. If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He went to check on those sleeping disciples. He came back. He began to pray. And he said, oh, Father, if it's not possible, that cup should pass. Thy will be done. He was praying to be saved from death. You say, therefore, God didn't answer his prayer. How could you say his prayer was heard when Jesus went ahead and faced the cross and died on the cross? How then was his prayer heard? I'll tell you two ways. Number one, Jesus was praying not to have to take that cup of death, but his prayer was heard, number one, because when he got up from that prayer, he was strengthened and filled with resolve to do the will of God. He said, not my will, but thine. In other words, God, in his, by, by Jesus praying, God didn't cause it so he wouldn't have to face death, but God gave him the resolve and the power and the ability that he could do it. Amen. But Brother Keith, it's not just that. Amen. You would expect God to answer his prayer not to have to die on the cross, that he wouldn't have to die on the cross. He said, save me from this death on the cross. So it would be logically, logical if God answered that prayer, he would save him from death on the cross. I want you to know he didn't. Jesus died on the cross. But God, the Father, still answered his prayer. How do you figure? Yes, Jesus faced death. But God delivered him so that death could not hold him. Oh, hallelujah. He still got victory over death. The victory wasn't that he didn't have to face it. The victory was that he faced death and he overcame it. Hallelujah. He was resurrected. God may not answer your prayer exactly the way you'd like for him to, but go ahead and pray and he'll answer it in a way that in the end you'll have the victory and he'll have the glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. Would you come? Would you come, music? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. A young man talked to me this morning. And I'm not doubting his sincerity at all. But he said, I want you to pray about this situation in my life and that situation in my life and this situation in my life. And they're all desperate situations that I don't demean them. But you know, my advice was, and it's still tonight, whatever your troubling situation, the main thing you need to do isn't to pray about your situation. You need to come to God and pray and call out to Him till He does something in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. How many believes that prayer changes me? Jesus prayed to escape death. It changed. Not, you know, he didn't need changes since we did, but just to overcome that pressing, pressing uh, uh, blackness of that cross. But, oh, it changed him because he said, Not my will, but thine be done. Gave him that resolve. We'll just stand across the building. I know it's not something you can just walk into turn on and off like a faucet but I wonder how many in a moment would be desirous to join me in this altar to really pray tonight it's still early I'm talking about really getting down to business and calling out to God. If you're here tonight and you've got troubling situations, oh my, I, I, I know we, we need times to share that with other folks. But if you've got desperate situations, it's time to just begin to pour out your heart to God and believe that He will hear you.
I'm telling you, if you're here tonight and you're not even a believer, you've not yet been born again, that's the kind of prayer that God's ears are open to. Lord, save me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. He'll hear, hear that prayer tonight. Whatever your need may be, how many like to join me? Join me tonight simply say I'm going to really pray tonight it's going to be more than a routine and ritual I'm going to pour out my heart to God oh how how many like to join me tonight change the way I think change the way I feel change my perspective I've been complaining and blaming what I need oh God is to come before you and make you Lord of my life and say not my will but thine be done I'm not saying don't bring him your trouble. I'm saying come and pour out your heart and see if he doesn't change. He doesn't transform. He doesn't make a difference in your life. Come and really pray. From young to old, lift up your voice. Jesus did. Amen. Jesus lifted up his voice with, with strong outcries. He